Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Match Day. We are there. It's Thursday, Arsenal back in action, hoping to book their spot in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. 3-1 they lead after that victory in Athens last week, but given what happened against Olympiakos just over a year ago at the Emirates, no one will be taking anything for granted this evening. Olympiakos, of course, have won on each of their last two visits to the Emirates Stadium, so this is not done and dusted just yet. But Arsenal have got a very, very commanding advantage thanks to that performance in Athens last week and those two pretty late goals from Gabriel and then Mohamed Elneny. So that's three away goals Arsenal have got going in to this one. You would hope, fingers crossed, that that is enough to get the job done. It's certainly a more commanding lead that they had this time last year against Olympiakos. Um, and you think that is going to prove to be very, very advantageous for Mikel Arteta's side. So I thought I'd pop on today. Uh, talk a little bit about that. First of all, apologies for yesterday's live stream that I did after the press conference. In fact, it cut off very abruptly. Uh, apologies for that. It wasn't the Wi-Fi went down. It was my phone went off and it just seemed to cut everything out. Uh, so apologies for that. I will pop back on and do uh, another Q&A very, very soon on here. Hopefully, I'll be doing one tonight as well uh, uh, during the warm-ups as usual. As long as I get to the Emirates on time, I will uh, try and do my usual live broadcast reacting to the team news and showing you the warm-ups. So feel free to ask me some questions when I do that so yeah just a little apology for some technical issues that happened last night right let's get into this one then so what um, are we expecting tonight well I think it's going to be I'd say a fairly it'll be a night attention but you would hope if Arsenal can get themselves an early goal that will calm any nerves that they had and they should book this uh Took their spot through to the quarterfinals fairly comfortably. Let's face it, I didn't think Olympiacos were that great last last week. And those three away goals, they are huge for Arsenal. So you'd expect it um, to be enough. But Mikel Arteta is certainly not taking anything for granted. He says, we went out of the tie last year because it was open. And then we had to manage the game in the last few minutes. We conceded two set pieces on that day and we missed some big chances. When you do that, these ties are defined in both boxes. And we didn't defend the tie when we had the opportunities. We know that again that tonight we're going to have to do that better. So um, Mikel Arteta calling for his side to be better in both boxes tonight than they were last year. We all know that big, big miss from Aubameyang, which would have sent Arsenal through last year just after they'd just basically the defence had parted and allowed El Rabi to score the winner for Olympiacos. Um, so Mikel certainly wants to see it better than what his side produced last week, uh, last year, and he certainly wants to see better than what they produced in the final 10-15 minutes against Spurs at the weekend when they all did their best to throw away uh, the victory. Um, he was asked that, what do you need to do differently tonight than you did in those final stages against Tottenham? And he said, everything different to what we did on Sunday against 10 men. Stop giving simple balls away, stop putting ourselves in trouble and have a clear direction of where we want to be and to have the ball in those last minutes. Play simple and be sure that we can win and manage the situation much better than we did on Sunday. I think we're all in agreement here that uh, Arsenal need to make sure they don't perform tonight like they did in those closing stages against Tottenham because uh, let's face it, they are awful. They played so well for 70, 75 minutes and then just completely lost their heads, didn't know how to play against 10 men, sat deep and uh, invited Tottenham on and almost, almost were a post width away from not winning the game, which they should have won comfortably. So Arteta very much aware that his side need to play better and manage the game better than they did um, last week against Spurs. And you would expect they would. I think that was a bit of a one-off. I think it was the fact it was a North London derby at the weekend and they'd put so much into that first 70, 75 minutes. I think it all just got a little bit too much from after the 10 men, after the red card. And they probably thought, oh, we've got this done now. And then suddenly Tottenham pushed on and Arsenal didn't really know what to do. But I'm not expecting them to do that. Um, Tonight and also Olympiacos don't have the quality going forward than Tottenham have, let's face it. So I think it should be a more comfortable evening today. Fingers crossed. And I hate saying that when it comes to Arsenal uh, because, as we all know, they've done their best over the years to show they can manage to lose games that you think they have won. But hopefully tonight I think they're going to have too much to, uh, to really struggle against this Olympiacos team. Right, team news ahead of that game looking very, very good. Obviously, we have the doubt over Bakai Saka. Mikel saying yesterday that he was going to have a test and then make a decision. He wasn't in the training pictures yesterday, um, which 
um, possibly suggests that maybe he's not going to be ready for today. I don't think, I said it yesterday, I don't think you risk Saka. Even if he is all right, I think you don't risk him in this one. If there's any issue with a hamstring, you let him rest. You give him a few more days and then prepare him for the West Ham game at the weekend. You just don't need to take any risks. You're 3-1 up. You've got players like Pepe, Willian, who can come in. Um, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, you know, it, all of those players can now rotate in those positions. You just don't need to risk Bakai Saka in this one. So uh, he's the only only real doubt for Arsenal. Everyone else, Mikel's saying, are hopefully going to be fine for the game. So team news-wise, Arsenal in very, very good shape. Just on Bakai Saka, Mikel was asked yesterday um, about England because England got three games in six days next week, which is absolutely mind-blowingly bonkers in this mad season where fixtures come in thick and fast to play squeeze three games into six days is absolutely mad i'm sure gareth southgate will probably use completely different teams for some of them especially when you consider the first games against san marino and you know you could basically play your under 21s team and win that game so you would think he's going to manage the workload carefully but still it's just mad that they've got three games in six days and um i mean if he's fit and given the all clear you'd expect saka's certainly going to be involved in that england squad and um, Mikel was asked, you know, do you, are you concerned about the workload he might have playing for England given this injury and the fact they've got three games in six days? He said, I don't know. We have two games to play before then, Olympiacos and West Ham. Uh, if he participates in them, then there is always a risk. So ask me that question after West Ham. Um, so that's what he's asking about, whether he's wor worried about Saka potentially linking up with England. Um, and he was also talking about when you talk about those international schedule and the three games in six days and Mikel really not happy with that he said I think it's a bit too much in general in a normal year so this year I think it becomes something really dangerous with the amount of minutes of these boys have played in such a short space of time with no preparation I don't think it's right but we're not going to change it the decisions have been made and the games are going to be played so it's just about how we protect our players in the best way possible understandably Mikel Arteta very worried about the interna international fix. I just think it's mad that they're having them. I know you've got to find a way of squeezing them in at some point, but it just seems mad at the moment when Europe's about to go into a third lockdown by the looks of it. Um, you know, there's just cases all over the world and you're sending your players all over the place and not just worried about coronavirus, but you're also asking them to play some of them three games in six days. It just seems absolutely mad um, to me. I just surely you look, common sense prevails in this situation and you look to find a solution within international football at the moment given we're in the middle of a global pandemic but who am I to say that uh, but understandably you can see why Mikel's upset and it's not just Mikel it's other managers as well and I think they're all going to be sitting there with their fingers crossed I mean imagine if Saka gets injured playing for England it'd just be an absolute disaster um, and it's not just Arsenal obviously as I said all managers are going to be sitting there thinking about it so yeah understandably Mikel very very concerned about that hopefully we can just sit back and watch Saka play well when he goes away with England and he doesn't have any pick up any injuries so uh, we will see on that one uh, back to tonight's game let's look at some of the key decisions Mikel's got to make and he's got quite a few of them to make I think because obviously you've got that game against West Ham on Sunday you've got the added protection of, a th of three away goals and a two goal lead do you make some changes for this one? Do you rest? Do you rotate? I don't. He tends to go very strong in the Europa League and then pos and then rotate more in the Premier League. We saw that in the game against Leicester when he basically made what six or seven changes that game, didn't he? And played the B team. You'd have thought uh, Leicester and Arsenal still won that three one. Did very very well. But he went strong in the Europa League and I, I think he will again. I think there might be a couple of changes today. Like I said, Saka. I don't think will play. So you're going to see. Pepe on the right, I would imagine. But I don't think he's going to make wholesale changes. I would say he's probably going to make more changes against West Ham at the weekend than he does tonight. Um, I will go through my predicted 11 at the end of this video. So he's got some big decisions to make. Like right, right back, obviously, I think Hector will probably come back in tonight and play. But then can, potentially you could move Cedric over to left back and give Kieran Tierney a rest ahead of the weekend. Um, at centre back, you've got big, big decisions to make. Because Gabriel and David Luiz, it seems like he's got two different partnerships for these games. Now he'll play Mary and hold it in one game you'll play Louise and Gabriel in another obviously Louise and Gabriel have played the last two so do you rotate tonight and play Mary and hold in and then have Louise and Gabriel play against West Ham so I think that's a big decision for him to make and then also you've got what happens up front and when I talk about what happens up front I mean Pepe on the right instead of Saka do you start with Lacazette or does Aubameyang come back in and play 
Um, do you play Willian on the left? Do you give one of the number 10s a rest, potentially Odegaard, who's played a lot of minutes recently? Do you move Smith-Rowe in back into the number 10 position and go with Pe- um, Pepe, Smith-Rowe and Willian behind Aubameyang or Lacazette? So really interesting decisions for Mikel to make tonight. And I'm, uh, I'm very intrigued to see what he's going to do. Like I said, I've got a feeling he'll go stronger tonight and he'll potentially rotate at the weekend do very similar to the, that he did in the week leading up to the Leicester game. Um, right, before I get on to my predicted 11, let's quickly talk about Gabriel Martinelli, shall we? Um, you know, there's potentially an opportunity for him tonight as well. You think he didn't even make the squad last time out. You'd expect, given Arsenal's lead, you know, he could come back in for this one and potentially not start, but certainly get some minutes and feel like it is an opportunity for him. Mikel was speaking about him yesterday. Um, he said, look, he's done everything perfectly. He trains incredibly well every day and his attitude couldn't be better. He's really disappointed that he's not been playing more, obviously. And I have spoken to him, but he needs to be a little patient. He had some minutes. He had some games as well. And it's true that competition for the front places is very tough. Very tough. He needs to be patient and he will get his chance. Now, I think what's important when Mikel says that and says it publicly, you will get his chance, is that you do at some point give him his chance. And tonight feels like the perfect opportunity to give him an opportunity to give him some minutes. And I'm not saying start him, although I'm sure lots of you would like to see him start. But certainly, you know, give him half an hour at the end if you're not going to start him. Just bring him in, make him feel more involved that he's not completely out in the cold at the moment. I think that's very important in terms of man management when it comes to younger players especially someone like Martinelli who had such a high early on and now is having a little bit of a struggle when it comes to game time. So I think you've got to make him feel involved and keep him really feeling like he's part of the squad. And tonight, to me, feels like a really good opportunity. Like I said, not necessarily to start, but certainly in the second half, if Arsenal have got this game one pretty comfortably, or even if they haven't, if they're still just a couple of goals up, you bring Martinelli on for the last hour, give him a decent chunk of time, not just 10 minutes at the end, like 13 minutes like he got against... Um, Uh, Benfica in Rome but give him a good half an hour to show what he can do and make him feel like he's part of this team um, again so for me that's a uh, a real real big opportunity for Martinelli to get some of the minutes that we're all hoping and craving to see him at play and hoping that he can take them and uh, put on a good showing for himself which will then hopefully you think put him more in the thinking for Mikel Arteta's plans between now and the end of the season. Right, before I go today, let's quickly talk about a predicted 11, shall we? Now, as I always say at the start of this, remember, this isn't based on information um, that I've got from Arsenal or from Mikel Arteta or anything like that. This is, or, And this isn't the team that I want to see. I'm predicting the team that I think Mikel Arteta will go for. And as always, please do put your comments in down below in terms of what you want to see from Arteta tonight. and Give me your start in 11s. Always intrigued and interested to read through them. I will try and reply to as many as possible when I get time at some point during the day. So this is what I think. As I said, I've got a feeling he's going to go pretty strong tonight and potentially rest some players at the weekend against West Ham. So here's my 11 for tonight's game. I'm going to go obviously with Burnt Leno in goal. I know a few of you said shouldn't Matt Ryan start today, but no, I think um, at the moment you play Burnt Leno in goal. I think Bellerin's going to come back in uh, right back. I think he'll probably stick with Gabriel and Louise today. Um, and that, to me, points towards Marion holding playing at the weekend. So I'm going to say a back four of Leno, uh, goalkeeper Leno, back four of Bellerin, Louise, Gabriel. And I'm going to go with Kieran Tierney continuing at left back. In midfield, I'm going to stick with a Granite Xhaka and Thomas Partey. Centre midfield, like I said, I think Mikel's going to go pretty strong tonight and he's going to keep those two in and potentially might make changes with the likes of Ceballos coming in for the game against West Ham at the weekend and then up front um, I'm going to go with Nicolas Pepe on the right in place of Bukayo Saka I'm, I think we might see Smith Rowe play at number 10 with Martin Odegaard giving a bit of a rest then Willian at the left and then the big one up front I think Lacazette's going to keep his place and Aubameyang is going to be on the bench once again. Mikel was asked about Aubameyang at a week um, again last night. Some fresh quotes from him that you wouldn't have seen um, from the press conference yesterday because they didn't get released till 10.30 last night. Um, He was just pressed a little bit more on Aubameyang and how he's feeling personally after what's happened. And he said, look, he's trained really well the last two days. He was smiling as usual, as we always expect from Aubameyang. It's all good. So Mikel very much feeling like this situation has now been resolved and put behind Arsenal and Aubameyang 
and the, the strike himself and the captain is feeling very good. And we, we all saw the training pictures. He looked very happy during the week. And that's what we want to see in a Bamiang smiling. Because when a Bamiang's happy, he plays well. And Arsenal need their captain to be playing well. But I just think we might see Lacazette start again tonight. And a Bamiang potentially come back into the starting 11 at the weekend at West Ham. So there you go. My predicted 11 one more time tonight. Leno, Bellerin, Louise, Gabriel, Tierney, Xhaka, Party, Pepe, Smithrow, Willian and Bamiang. Right, that's about it from me. Thank you for watching as always, everyone. I will pop back on later. Like I said, as long as I get to the Emirates in time, I'm not stuck in that North London traffic on the Holloway Road. Um, and I will do my usual live broadcast reacting to the team news, showing you the warm-ups, and I'll do a bit of a Q&A as well. So whatever your questions you've got to ask me, please do fire away and I'll get involved there. And then thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll speak to you very, very soon.